our show for today focuses on the fact that there's a company called Sira Resources that's an Australian company with operations globally, including the United States. And they just completed a deal with Tesla for four years worth of increased production of graphite. And this agreement has resulted in a 30% rise in the shares of this stock. And after this report came out, there was kind of a negative report that came out from Barron's, which prompted our show today. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the show and would like tips and ideas on better investing uh, as we head into a critical period for Tesla, please join us on Patreon. We also appreciate those of you who take time to like and subscribe. So, uh, and also please note, this is a copyrighted broadcast. Uh, any material uh, has to be have written permission for reuse. So this is, there's a concept out there that's called revenge porn, and this is revenge YouTube. One of the things that's going on for Tesla right now is anytime a credible news organization presents a negative story on Tesla, if there's no response, the likelihood is that that negative comment can result in sort of a negative downforce on a stock, especially Tesla, especially given all the volatility related to its options heading into uh, an important period currently. One of the things we've talked about a lot is that this period is typically controlled by either the analysts or the news organizations because we're in the quiet period for the company. Now, there was an announcement that happened this week on Thursday that this past week that indicated that there's a company called Syrah, S-Y-R-A-H Resources. That's a company that's based in Australia. Evidently, there's uh, something called graphite and it's part of the production process for batteries that Tesla is, has been working on and they've been working on sourcing all manner of raw materials, be it cobalt or graphite or uh, lithium, et cetera, on long-term contracts with suppliers globally. So one of the things that's kind of happened over the last three or four years, definitely over the last three years, is that um, Tesla has run into kind of an embarrassment of riches. It has a huge energy storage business at grid scale, as well as, um, you know, on a home by home basis, as you know. Uh, but so that's kind of a separate business when it comes to sort of grid scale batteries, working with utilities and other entities. For example, Samsung is one of the big suppliers to Tesla in that space. This allows them to do terrestrial um, uh, storage facilities uh, for electricity because there's not such a critical uh, issue with uh, charge and recharge quickly and also being very light uh, relative to minimizing weight so that the vehicles carrying those batteries won't be under uh, stress. So there's a lot of optimizations that go with, if you will, higher level versus lower level uh, lithium ion batteries. So Elon made a comment, which was, you know, there are current suppliers that were concerned that uh, if Tesla was buying from one supplier, they'd buy none or less from another supplier. And he indicated to all of these suppliers that uh, he will take as many batteries as they can produce. And so because of the different divisions that Tesla has, those batteries are actually sinking in depending on where they're needed everywhere from high or low end of the vehicles being produced all the way over to terrestrial storage, be it in homes or grid scale, as I said, within uh, utilities. So one of the reasons I chose to do this show today is kind of response to a Barron story that said that now that Tesla has signed this deal for graphite, 
with zero resources, this potentially um, is business that will be taken away from Chinese suppliers. 70% of the graphite in the world actually comes from China, and Tesla has a, a, a battery supply relationship primarily to the Shanghai facility um, from uh, cattle. And so therefore, uh, there's a sense that, um, if you will, Tesla's cheating on the Chinese by engaging Syrah resources out of South Africa to expand their graphite production to help service Tesla's needs. And so I read this and I was kind of shocked because I know that I've seen some pretty low blows from Wall Street Journal as well as Barron's when it comes to Tesla, but I thought this was a particularly low blow because <clears throat> there's a way that they're kind of spinning the story to suggest that, you know, is there a way we can make a comment that will cause the Chinese government or Chinese entities to harm the relationship with Tesla? And so I thought the comment was very interesting because Cattle currently is in negotiations with Tesla to produce the 4680 battery. Uh, I really didn't see the whole cheating analogy, analogy or taking business away from the Chinese analogy because Cattle is a supplier to Tesla, but Tesla gets supplies from LG. As you know, they're a partner with Panasonic and they still buy batteries from Panasonic that are not built in Reno and they're expanding their relationship with Panasonic. So Tesla has actually moved to source batteries from a large number of entities all around the globe. And uh, <clears throat> the Chinese facility is somewhat focused on making sure that they have domestic supplies. Uh, they're trying to get to that 100% target to keep the supply to that factory within China. So. It's my belief that this Wall Street Journal article was designed to potentially damage the relationship between the Chinese and Tesla by suggesting that Tesla's pulling business away from uh, manufacturers uh, in China. And so, I, again, I'm really surprised by this, given the fact that tes Tesla has a fairly diverse supply base and has signed long-term contracts uh, pretty much on every continent, the United States, Canada, um, Australia, obviously, China, obviously, and uh, those suppliers are sourcing um, raw materials from Africa that, like cobalt that can't be found anywhere else in quantity. So I um, am kind of intrigued because despite this being kind of a revenge uh, YouTube video, one of the things that I've been kind of watching carefully of late is there's an interesting phenomenon that's starting to emerge where Tesla is sort of choking the supply chain uh, to other manufacturers in interesting ways. So, for example, if you're selling and you have buyers from different uh, organizations, one of the challenges that those folks are having is that the sales of your your electric vehicles are going to impact how much you're buying. Well, in the case of Tesla, what if Tesla starts buying as much as they can get from those a variety of manufacturers globally? Well, what can also happen here is the fact that you could have Tesla start the relationship and keep growing the volume consumed to the point where there's nothing left for competitors who are ramping their production who currently don't have enough demand to take down supply currently, but their lack of ability to take supply immediately could result in them having difficulty getting supply when they are ready to ramp. So this is a bit of a shock because if you think about it, Tesla is a relatively small company in terms of number of cars produced, number of factories, et cetera, globally, but at the same time, because they so dominate the EV space, there's actually the potential where they kind of, their buying habits to, to meet the needs they currently have potentially chokes out uh, large competitors that are taking time to get to market. And they, those competitors may not be able to stockpile 
uh, raw materials with the contracts they currently have because they don't have vehicle demand for it yet. And it really doesn't make sense for them to lose money in anticipation down the road of production. So I'm bringing all this up because there's some behind the scenes things happening for Tesla that I think are really interesting that helps set up the future. The one last component of this I think is fascinating is that because Tesla has this storage business, be it in-home storage for individuals or grid scale, there's a large amount of storage capacity and other technology that's going into those storage solutions that's turned out to be a benefit to the primary production of vehicles. Because now you have a situation all of a sudden where the um, if there's some difficulty, the net yield from a sale of a vehicle is far higher than a home-based storage facility. So now you have the potential, if they need it, for Tesla to slow down the home deliveries and increase the number of vehicles they can produce because they have this other business that's related and uses a lot of the same components. And those components can simply be delayed to those customers to increase car production, which I think is a nice little working together symbiotic relationship. So I believe that this really highlights another wrinkle to Tesla out there. Um, one of the ways if you love Tesla and you're investing in it, you know, right now you're looking at a thousand dollar plus stock price in the case of Syrah resources, it's a dollar 26 us per share of that company. And with a part long term partner like Tesla and the growth of use of certain key components like graphite in this case, I think it's an excellent investment and an excellent company to consider investing in. So I definitely think that this is a sabotage move by the folks at Barron's relative to Tesla potentially cheating on the Chinese with other suppliers. But that whole logic doesn't make any sense other than to throw negative news out there that could cycle Tesla's stock price down uh, because prior to the factory coming in in Shanghai, Tesla has been working with suppliers globally, including in China, for a long time. So why would their continuing to have that global supplier base represent cheating on the Chinese? Answer, it just sounds really good and it sounds like a potential damage and harm to Tesla. And uh, I, I think it's totally unfair, hence the reason why I wanted to do this show. Plus, we get to bring up this new company that's worth your time to review as a potential investment. So um, again, Sierra, Pharma Sierra Resources, interesting company to research, fairly cheap stock price. Tesla relationship, I expect it to keep rising uh, because uh, having the world's best company in the EV space, write out a four-year contract anticipatory to uh, getting supplies like this is excellent, hence the, the stock prices rise. And at the price it's at, I think it's a great deal. So we want to thank you for taking time out to listen in on this discussion. Just a reminder, um, our health tips, um, wanted to encourage you to consider bed and wake at the same time every day for a couple of weeks to help your body establish a circadian rhythm that'll be a healthier alternative you'll find over time. Secondly, um, we've got a bunch of below a list of uh, health tips uh, from different health professionals that might be worth your time to consider. At any rate, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, German, au revoir, French, Le Hitro, Hebrew, Choda, Hafez, as Farsi, as Strais, Vichy, Russian, Nihao, Ma, Chinese, Kambanwa, Japanese, Heido, Swedish. And in uh, Jamaica, we say, enough respect, walk good. Thanks for joining us. Happy holidays once again to you and yours. And we look forward to constructive comments based on topic covered today. Have a great day and bye for now.
it's the first time I've seen the Model 3 with this combination, so it's beautiful. It's the first time I've seen a scooter on a Model 3 before. <laughs> Don't get leaving. I think it's a handicap space and he's leaving. All right.
Well, That is so cool. 